Today on the channel we're going to explore Eddie Van Halen's tapping and speed picking techniques. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over some tapping techniques employed by Eddie Van Halen and we're going to talk about speed picking and what Eddie did to get that speed picking sound that we're uh, so in love with that Eddie does, right? So let's take a look at finger tapping. There's a lot of different uh, finger tapping techniques out there today, uh, more than you can, you can count on, on both hands, right? But we're going to talk about um, Eddie's style and some of the things that he did early on in his career and, and throughout the career of Van Halen. One of the things that you have to understand about Eddie's tapping techniques is he outlined basically triads, minor triads and major triads, suspended triads. So everything Eddie did pretty much had some type of theoretical knowledge behind it. Um, whether he was into music theory or not, he had a great ear and he understood by playing piano, he understood piano shapes and chord shapes and was able to put that on the, the fretboard and outline those chord shapes. So uh, basically what we're talking about, it's not very complicated, but let's break it down to the basic fundamentals. Let's talk about minor, minor triads and minor tapping and, uh, and then we'll do some major and then some suspended things, all right? But minor, minor tapping uh, tr a triad. So let's take an A minor. So we know an A minor chord, basic A minor chord is here. All right, and a triad consists of a, a, a root note, a third, and a fifth. The minor triad is the root note, so an A minor, that's A, that's the one. The minor third is a C, and the fifth is an E. So, one, three, five. All right, so one, if we play on the high E string, a one on the high E string is an A. Right there, okay, on the fifth fret. And then the, the uh, C note, remember C is our third. So there's our C, which is on the eighth fret. They're all over the place, right? But C on the... The high E string is is, is on the uh, eighth, so we're on five and eight, and then E is the twelfth fret. So, and if we go down each string, as we go down um, one string linearly, Eddie did a lot of linear movements to keep it simple. He would hold, he would do this whole pattern down the entire fretboard, and you can hear that on Hot for Teacher at the very end of the, the intro lick there. So what we're going to do is we're going to outline this A minor triad. We're going to go... Right, this is very basic to begin with. Now, now basically what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to take our pointer finger, we're going to put it on the 12th fret, and we're going pl to pluck the note like this. That gives us our, basically our, our gas that gets us going on this, this note. We're going to fret the A down here on the fifth, but we're going to, we're going to just glide the pointer finger off that string and we're going to hammer on with our pinky on the eighth fret like that. And we're going to hammer on on the twelfth. So when we do it a little bit faster, Okay, so if we go fast, that's what that sounds like. The whole time I'm plucking with my, my pointer finger, hammer on with a pinky, hammer on with my pointer finger. Now one thing you're going to want to do is it'll make a lot of noise. It, a lot of times... Uh, I see, you know, uh, beginners try to tap, and there's a lot of extraneous noise uh, created on the fretboard when they're they're playing and doing tapping. But what you've got to do is take your palm and rest it on the strings like this, and we're only letting the the high E string 
ring. So we've got our palm on the string, so we're muting it because you want to have a lot of distortion or a lot of volume, a lot of gain, so you get that sustain so the notes sound clear. If I don't have my palm on the strings, it's likely we'll get all this weird, all this weird noise. So you want to have the palm there. Then we're going to go down to the B string and do the same linear shape going down. Go down to the G string. Go down to the D. Go down the A. Go down the low E. Okay, so that's that's a linear minor pattern with our root note on the pointer finger. So it's root. We're going to skip two frets and be on the eighth and then on the twelfth. And that's going to be three frets in between. So we're going to be going up five frets. So it's one, up four frets to the fourth fret, and then up five frets there. Now you can do this anywhere on the on the fretboard. So if you if you were up here on an E on the twelfth fret, you can go E G E G B. Now notice there's two frets in between these two notes, and there's three frets in between these. So you can do it if you don't want to memorize what the notes are, you can just memorize this pattern. So, if your song is in G minor, for instance, and you want to do a cool G minor tapping thing, and we're going to chug on G minor, watch this. So if that's like the rhythm, for instance, we could start on our G. And go. It's a G minor. Just some ideas there, all right? So let's go back to A minor. Now this is an E minor, because this is an E. This is C minor. That's a G minor. There's a D minor. Back to A minor. All right, very, very, very cool. All right, now we're going to take it one notch a little bit, a little bit um, higher. All right, so sometimes Eddie will add. Sometimes he'll add a second note in there. So we're going to keep the same shape. So we're going to go. So what I'm doing there, same concept. I'm gonna I'm gonna pluck on this 12th fret to start the tapping sequence, and I'm gonna hammer on on the seventh, hammer on the eighth, hammer on the twelfth. I just skip down to the B string. Go right down linearly. Practice this in other positions. Like we can practice it up here. I'm going to be on the the tenth fret. So watch. You want each note to be clear and clean. key to it all is getting it started with that 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 launching pad when you pluck the note like this you're just gonna move the string so you can get that momentum started kind of like a car rolling down the hill all right let's kick it into the next gear okay so what Eddie does is um, a lot of times is he'll he'll ascend which means go up and then he'll descend So basically we're going to go up like we did and then we're going to pluck and then we're going to leave this finger, the pinky here, on the 8th 
and hammer or pull off on the way down. That's a hammer on. And then that's a pull off. For teacher, the ending of that beginning riff goes and then he goes like that. Alright, if you want to see that, I've got a lesson on the Hot for Teacher and it kind of outlines this whole intro for Hot for Teacher. Now, one thing you just saw me do is I went and the next string I went. So, what you can do also on this lick is you can just descend. You don't have to ascend first. You can just start doing almost pull-offs. Pull-off is pretty easy. You can just go. If you can get that down, you just add the... All right, so lots of cool things here. So we're looking at minor triad. You can also descend on that minor. And then we're going to add the second note. Do a hammer on. And we're going to do pull off. Ascend and, pull, ascend and descend. It's a hammer on and a pull off. And then we can do just descending. Cool. So basically memorize that shape. This is your, your fundamental minor shape. Like that. And you can move it anywhere on the fretboard. Okay. So now let's move it to major. Eddie did a lot of major chord chordal tapping. So we just talked about A minor. All right. Now uh, a major chord is an on in A is A, then a C sharp. It sounds happy. So we're going to change one note. We're going to change the minor third to a major third. And what that means is we're going to go A, and then instead of the C there. We're going to move that C sharp there. There's three frets in between that. So, and we're going to still play the high E as our fifth. So it sounds like that. So it's do me so. The same concept applies that we just talked about. So you can do or do ascend and descend. Linearly go down the fret. He does this in Ice Cream Man. He's up here on the 12th fret and he does this. He does a major triad basically up there on the on the high E. Very similar. So it's like. Okay, but I think he picks it like. That's easy to do up here. We're going to talk about speed picking in a minute. But Eddie did a lot of high, like really crazy arpeggios up high because the higher up that you get on your fretboard, the closer the frets are. So you can do really interesting and fun stretches. If you've got big hands like Eddie or over time, even if you've got smaller hands, your, your muscles will wind up, uh, your tendons will get used to stretching out and being able to reach uh, farther distances. So if this is hard, if these, if these stretches are hard and you're feeling pain in your hand, it's okay. It gets better. It takes a little bit of time, but you got to work on it each day, right? And you'll notice if you, if you take your, fret, your hand on the fretboard and you, and you put your hand down like this, you'll, some, some of you probably are like, oh, I can only do this, like five or six frets. But you'll eventually notice over time you know, that you'll be able to rest your hand on your fretboard like this and you'll have like a really good stretch. And, and, and that's when you're, you'll notice that 
doing these types of, of runs and tapping exercises won't fatigue your hand as uh, frequently or as often, okay? It's still, it still hurts, man. Tapping, and if you haven't warmed up or you haven't done it in, in a couple weeks or something, it's something that you, you really never get used to doing unless it's just part of your everyday routine. If It's like any muscle. If you don't run, you're going to have no stamina. If you run every single day and you work out, you're going to have more stamina. Same is true for guitar playing and stuff like this. All right, so we're going to go back to major triad. So we're right here. And this is where your root note is on the pointer finger, the major third, and the, and the fifth. So now one nice thing you can do, you can add the second again, like that's Do, Re, Mi. Remember we did the ascending and descending thing? You can do that here. Okay, so that's that's kind of Van Halen-esque. This this linear stuff is is very Eddie. It's very very Eddie because Eddie was the kind of guy that liked to to make things simple, but they sounded great. Great guitar players don't try to play complicated. They try to make easy riffs so they can replicate it live and. If you can make an easy riff sound complicated, then you're really a genius. <laughs> so, so there we, we've just talked about minor and major. Now, one interesting thing about this concept is you can, you don't always have to put the, you don't always have to put the root note on your pointer finger. You can do like A minor we talked about is A, C, E, right? Well, if we, we can start down here, this is kind of getting a little bit more deeper in the theory, but if we say we're on our low E string, or our low A string, there's a C, right? And if we go to an E there, there's a C, E, and there's an A up on the 12th fret. That's a big stretch. This is the hop for teacher. This is the hop for teacher um, stretch. So this is C, E, A. This is the second version of an A minor triad. That's A minor, but it's got the C on the root. It's just the same as... It starts on a different note. And, and, the, and the, the linear pattern or secret to that is you can play this anywhere. There's You play here, then go up one, two, three, four frets. And then go up one, two, three, four, five frets. So we're gonna go. And we go up linearly. Now this was our minor third. So if we go up to a major third, we're going to play major chords. There's an A major. Awesome. Now one thing Eddie did with Hop for Teacher is he took this, this A minor triad and he added an open A to it. So what, we're did, what we do here is we're on the 12th fret and we, we pull off to an open A and then hammer on to the C, hammer on to this E, hammer on to the A, and then we're going to descend. Now when I descend, I'm going to pull this note off with my with my pointer finger, I go much like we pulled off here to get it going. This they, this keeps the train rolling. So in slow motion, now if we speed it up, when I first learned this way back in the 80s, I could not get this up to speed. I literally had to. Um, just work on it for a couple of years, man, literally. And it, it really hurt my hand. This is a very big stretch because we're way down the fretboard and the frets are farther apart from each other. Uh, Eddie takes this pattern here. He stays 
stays all on the 12th fret with the pointer finger, but he brings this up two frets. And we still keep that open A. stringy goes now we go back to that beginning thing I showed you with the A minor so so that's that's another thing that Eddie does is open string four note arpeggio tapping ascend and descend. All right, let's look at one more thing here. If you listen to Spanish Fly, you notice that Eddie does he descends his tapping into uh, and he morphs it from like. A minor chord to like a sus chord to a major chord so he does something like this all right so there's a major chord that's a that's like an E minor or E major what I did there is I brought my pointer finger down one fret so what I'm doing here is I'm on the fifth I'm on the 9th and 12th, 5, 9, 12. We're going to make this 12 and 11. And we're going to lower the pointer finger down to the 4th. And we're going to move this pinky down one fret. So now that's the same shape as this. So we're moving this down. It goes like this. And we're going to go like this. And we're going to go like that. And then like that. And now we, we just morphed it from this shape to this shape, slowly by moving this finger first, then that, then this one. So, pointer finger down, this pointer finger down, then the pinky down. Now move to the G string, same thing. And that's all just ascending tapping. Now sometimes you'll hear Eddie do something where he moves. He'll move his 12th, this from the 12th down to the 11th, the 12th up to the 14th, like this. What I'm doing there is I'm, I'm on this major triad, all ascending. I'm going 11, 12, 14. And keeping this hand doing that. Cool. All right. And sometimes he'll go. That's another thing that Eddie will do. All right. So that's kind of fun. All right, so if your uh, brain is spinning right now and your head's like, oh my gosh, then I, I accomplished my mission, right? <laughs> I give you a lot of homework to work on. Real quick, I'm going to talk about speed picking because I feel like speed picking and finger tapping are two things Eddie does a lot of, right? Uh, in conjunction, especially in his solos. So let's talk about this A minor triad again. This. All right, and remember we did this second thing like this. So if you take that shape, just five, seven, eight, ten, twelve. That right there. 
I'm just going to show you this one little pattern in, in the picking technique. So I went one, two, three, four, five, and up to an octave A. So, uh, with a little bit of vibrato, okay? And the reason I'm just showing you this pattern is it's more about the picking technique, the tremolo picking. Now, Eddie did this butterfly technique where he held his pick like this, and he, he picked like this. And that's a that's a a technique that he developed, you know, probably from just years of doing it that way. But I'm not going to show you that way because I think it's inefficient and it worked for Eddie. And that's awesome, but it's it's very difficult to learn that. I'm going to show you a little bit easier way to to anchor down and speed pick that I feel will get you there quicker and painlessly. So the first thing you're going to want to do is one mistake I see is people use too much of the pick. You want to use the very end of the pick. If you can find a stylus pick online, I don't know if they still make stylus picks, but they invented these picks back in the late 80s, early 90s. It looked like a little diamond point on the pick. And they, they taught me how to speed pick, and it teaches you how to just use the very end of the pick. So um, the, the, the trick to it is, it's just the very end of the pick. You just want to use just the very, very end of the pick because you're not going to have a lot of, you don't want the string to be really, be, you want to be really digging into the string because you're going to have a lot of resistance. You want to just be on the very end of the pick. It's just the very, very end. If you look at my pick, I don't know if you can see it, but my picks always wear out where they're kind of rounded on the end, which is okay. Um, but that's why. And what I wind up doing is I angle my pick ever so slightly diagonal like this. And so I'm not picking straight against the string like this. It's kind of like this because there's less resistance. When you're picking right on the string like that, there's a lot of resistance this way. It, it kind of goes over the tip of the pick, the edge, first, rather than the point. And so I, I, I kind of have that angle going. And and I take this pinky and I rest it on the body of the guitar. And that lets my hand know where I'm at. And I put my palm on the rest of the strings. So if I'm if I'm speed picking the high E, I'm resting my hand on the strings and I'm anchored down a little bit. There's not a lot of pressure on the strings or on the body of the guitar. But, but my pinky is grazing the, the guitar so I can I can gauge where the pick is, how high it is off the string. And that allows me to place the pick just over the string and and get the, the most speed and least resistance on that string and I move my whole arm like this a lot of teachers tell you just to use your wrist that's fine you can do that but what I wound up doing over the years and years of playing there is admittedly quite a bit of tension going on in my muscles right around here. A lot of teachers said, don't do that, you'll you'll strain it. You really won't. You'll get used to that and it'll become very strong. And I think you have a little bit more stability and a little bit more control when you play it like that. It's almost like you're making a muscle with your arm in a way and, and anchoring down and picking. So what Eddie did a lot of times with his speed picking is he did he did scales he'll he did like major or minor scales So you want to learn your major scales it's just do re mi fa sol la ti do so. A G, so zero, two, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, twelve, and then it just repeats up here. If 
we're on the D, on the, on the B string. In Eruption, he does this. What that is is 12. 12 to uh, 16. That's a major triad. 12, 16, 19. Then 17, 16, 17, 14, 16, 12. speed picking it's pick angle like this just the very end of your pick kind of the side of the point anchor down with your pinky on the body of the guitar palm mute to to not have any extraneous string noise either use your wrist or use your forearm a lot of times Eddie will do like um, one, two, three, like on this minor, like A, B, C, and ascend and descend. Or he'll go like uh, one, three, four, or one, two, th one, two, four. Something like that. Another thing that he'll do is uh, for speed picking exercises, it's like this diminished thing. So we're going to try this diminished thing. We'll put our middle finger on the 12th fret. This will be the last thing I show you tonight. The middle finger on the 12th fret, and then we're going to be two frets below and two frets above. So if we go like, if we hammer on. And then up here at the very top string. So it sounds like. I'm ascending and descending. Picking is key. This is uh, a lot of information. I uh, hope that it was helpful and that you like this kind of content. If you do, please consider subscribing, comment below, and as always, have a great day. Peace out.